Hey everybody, hope you're doing good today. I'm just waking up and really want to get a jump on some videos. So this one's going to be my top 5 EDC knives of 2015. Been really looking forward to doing this video and uh, just really haven't had time lately with work and everything that's been going on. Uh, so I'm off now for the holidays for uh, 5 days in a row, which is going to be awesome for me. Uh, really looking forward to some relaxing time and actually getting some videos done. Um, so this video is, like I said in the start, uh, my most used and carried knives of 2015. I had to limit myself to five because if I didn't, pretty much my whole collection would be in this video because I do use and carry all my knives. But uh, before I get into the five that you see before you, I'm going to roll some knives in that I have carried this year, but I can't consider them the most carried or most used knives of 2015 just because I haven't owned them as long as the ones you see in front of you. Um, so I'm going to roll in that now. The first one being the 710 McHenry and Williams design Benchmade. Um, got this about three months ago roughly and uh, have carried it, have used it. You can see a little bit of pocket clip wear. But uh, just because I've owned it for three months, I, it, it hasn't been in my pocket as much as these ones here. Um, this knife is extremely awesome. You can see a little scuffing there. Extremely awesome blade shape. I really love the handle on this, and I do really love the G10. It's very different from your standard G10. You can see how shiny it is. It's not as traction-y as most G10s but it does have a really nice quality to it and a real nice feel in hand. Um, Benchmade knocked this one out of the park and that's why it's been around for so long. It was the first knife ever to feature the Axis Lock and uh, really proud to have this one in my collection. Um, this knife made me fall in love with the recurve blade shape. Never really was into it before this knife. Um, just pulled the trigger on this knife and when I got it and started using it, fell immediately in love with it. Uh, the D2 steel on this is awesome, but can't be considered one of my top five EDCs and most carried knives of 2015, just because I've only owned it for three months out of the year. Uh, the next one up for the same reason is my Zero Tolerance 0350 with the carbon fiber scales, S30V steel. I've only owned this one for maybe a month, not even, but uh, have used it, have carried it, and uh, really love it also. I uh, love the blade shape. Once again, a recurve, which was sort of brought to my attention because of this one. Um, really wanted this knife before, but wasn't sure about the recurve. Um, sharpening it, I gotta keep my knife sharp and in using uh, capability sort of thing, just because I, I don't want it dull and I don't like using dull knives. They're more dangerous than sharp knives in my opinion and in a lot of other people's opinions too just because you'll tend to slip more with them. But this knife blew me away. Um, there's nothing else to say about it other than that really. Um, the recurve on this is awesome. The blade shape, the belly you get. Uh, if you're noticing the, the width of the bevel here, I actually reprofiled this to 10 degrees per side just to see if I, I, I would like it and just to see if the steel would stand up to it and it has actually remarkably. Um, 20 degrees inclusive angle is pretty thin for S30V and you would sort of expect a lot of chipping or rolling but I had no problems with this whatsoever. Um, when I got this I carried it for about a week and uh, it was still assisted at that time and then after that week I de-assisted it and really glad I did that because uh, I love this knife that much more uh, de-assisted. Um, when I did my de-assisting video for this it was a little bit stiff and I had to give it a, a lot of wrist action to flick it out but now it's totally broken in and I don't have to whatsoever. Flipper works great now and actually comes out pretty hard when it's uh, broken in like it is. Um, bent the tip on this, um, maybe using it for something I shouldn't. You can sort of see there how it sort of curves off to that side. I was uh, needing to change a tire and had nothing to take off the hubcap with, just the 
the sort of plasticish metal hood cap that covers the lugs and uh, decided to use this because I couldn't get it off it was sort of jammed on the tire uh, did a little bit of prying and uh, later looked at it and seen that I actually bent the tip not a big deal uh, if it ever does break or bend even more i'll probably just send it into kershaw with the, what the 30 bucks and get them to replace the blade because they're awesome for that but only own this for a month so can't consider it one of my top carried knives and used knives of 2015 and same with this one here this is the spiderco uk pk in titanium love this knife and uh you'll guaranteed to see this in uh the 2016 most carried knives type thing uh, when I end up doing that next year because uh, I love this blade I don't really need a lock on my knives I don't use them for stabbing so usually to me uh, stabbing motion requires some sort of lock because you really don't want a blade closing on your fingers um, just a little bit of oil left on this from when I cleaned it last but love the blade shape Love the blade thickness and love the ergonomics of this handle. Probably my ideal knife for ergonomics, this one. Classy looking knife, but it definitely could get shit done. So moving on to my actually most carried and most ni used knives of 2015. Um, just starting at the top, you see the Sage One by Spyderco. This knife has blown me away ever since the day I got it. It was super smooth out of box, but now it's just ridiculously smooth. You don't even have to break the blade down. You could just give it a little flick and it drops no problem. Loved using this knife. Great ergonomics on this and a very capable blade. Uh, strong design and uh, that deep carry pocket clip by Spartaco, that wire clip. I love that. Uh, goes in and out of the pocket very easily. Uh, doesn't sort of hang up even on thicker jeans and uh, just a really joy to use um, don't really have to worry about whipping this out in public because it's such a nice looking blade and such sort of an incon inconspicuous blade um, it really fits nice in the hand and uh, that liner lock there that's that's what amazes me about this knife uh, playing with it using this knife and using it quite hard uh, carving against wood and stuff like that and haven't had a problem with the lockup at all. In fact, it hasn't even changed the position since I got it. It's still in the exact same spot as when I got it brand new. Um, a joy to carry and a joy to use, and I've used this a hell of a lot, guys. Um, I don't know if it'll be able to come off on camera because my uh, camera really doesn't like to focus when I want it to. You can see scratches on the blade. Uh, this side's a little bit worse, you can see there. <laughs> but uh, I, I sort of like that in my knives. It shows that I use them and it shows, sort of tells a story each scratch type thing. But uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite knives to carry and definitely been carried a lot. Uh, the next one here is the Benchmade Mini Striker. Uh, I'm not sure on the number, so I'll just look at the blade right quick. It's the 904. Um, Great EDC size, probably my preferred everyday carry size for a knife. Um, love the Tonto shaped blade and it's super functional. And uh, didn't really think back about a year ago that uh, Tonto blades would be functional for everyday carry, but I was wrong. I mean, this knife has proven itself to me at work countless times. And uh, the finish on this blade is what's really spectacular. It resists scratches and hides them very well. And uh, just some minor scratches you can see right around there. But all the rest of them are sort of hidden within that stonewash slash satin grind. Love the access lock. Uh, this one's really smooth. Doesn't drop freely, but that's because I, I, I don't really like them to drop freely like that. I'd rather have a little bit of resistance in there just so it doesn't sort of fall on my finger because I've had that happen once before. You see a little bit of a lanyard here with a Smuckatelli skull on there. Love these things. Um, that's just so I can get it out of my pocket a little bit easier. Um, this deep carry pocket clip doesn't leave much, if anything, to grab and pull out sort of thing. And uh, it's not like the uh, wire clip here where it's 
as easy to get in and out but uh, I usually wear thicker jeans and the pockets on them are quite thick so that's the reason for that if you're wearing normal jeans it would be no problem um, love the ergonomics on this and actually that lanyard you could see actually aids in the grip too because it's a smaller knife great knife and carried this a hell of a lot and uh, you really don't notice when you carry this because it is that deep carry pocket clip and it is a small knife so it sort of disappears um, love the pocket clip finish on this I think it's their uh, Ah, Christ, I'm going to draw a blank now. I forget what uh, finish this pocket clip is, but it's not that paint stuff. It's actually like a, a finish onto the steel, which really resists any sort of wear. You'll just see minor scratches on it. And that's about it. Thumb stud deployment on this is really smooth, whether you flick it out or uh, just ease it open. And usually that's how I open my knives when I'm going to use them. I'll just do it the old-fashioned way type thing of opening it slowly like that. But a great EDC knife and I've carried a crap ton this year. Next up is an obvious choice and this is always what's fighting to stay in my pocket is the Paramilitary 2 by Spyderco. Great blade and I've used this uh, so much guys. Um, can't speak highly enough about this. Sorry about that guys, I got a phone call. Um, that's the sort of problem you run into when you record with your cell phone. Uh, but like I was saying, I've carried this a lot. It's it, If you own a paramilitary too, you know how much of a joy it is to use and carry. For the size blade it is, it's super lightweight. Um, you can see here I have a sort of custom titanium backspacer in that gear pattern and it's anodized a uh, bluish purple blurple if you will <laughs> and uh, really love this knife you can see the marks on the blade there uh, it's a definite user knife and I don't mind using this quite hard I ended up snapping the tip just a, a fraction of the tip off of this one and reprofiled it there you can see the scratches now can't you um, Ended up reprofiling it to where it brought that tip sort of back, but it's not as pointy as it used to be. Um, just sort of screwing around in the bush with this and uh, caught it into a piece of wood and twisted the wrong way type thing. Love the compression lock. And uh, if you look at Spyderco's 2016 lineup, they have a new model coming out with the compression lock in it. I'm not sure of the name of it, but uh, seen that in a couple of videos uh, reviewing the 2016 Spyderco catalog. Uh, ordered one myself, so it should be here probably in the new year. Um, usually order it when I get a chance to or when they first release it, because it does take a, a little bit of time to get to me here in Canada. Great knife overall, and uh, you can see the marks on the handle. I. I used to hate that. I used to like not freak out, but freak out when my kni my knives got marked up. But now I I kind of like it. It sort of adds the character, like I said before, and uh, shows that you actually use them, and it tells a story. Like uh, I dropped this on the concrete at work, and it scraped across the floor. Uh, funny thing, when I dropped this, it smacked the concrete so hard, it 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 sort of made like a black powder smell. <laughs> I don't know why that is. But uh, that's what happened. Don't carry a lanyard on this one because I don't see a need to. You're definitely left over with a lot of uh, meat to grab here to get it out of your pocket. And uh, really awesome knife that I love to carry and use this year. This here is the Victoriox Farmer. And uh, I can't speak highly enough about this knife. Um, this is probably my most carried knife period um, no matter what other knife I'm carrying this is in the fifth pocket of my jeans and uh, love to use it so much utility in such a small package has that uh, standard bottle opener the flathead with the bottle opener that last one was a can opener with that wire stripping notch has the very functional saw and uh, the main blade. Uh, love this blade. You can see the scratches on it there. 
and uh, the thickness is what surprised me about this knife when I first got it. This blade is actually thicker than most others of uh, Swiss Army knives. If you get like the red uh, plastic scale versions, it's a little bit thinner blade, but love this blade. You can get a lot of work done with that beefiness down here, and then you can see how fine a tip you get, so you can do your precision work up there. Also has a uh, reamer all in it, and that's pretty much a, a really good tool for any sort of task you need some poking and prodding with, as well as the intended use for that tool. Uh, just boring holes in various materials, plastic. Um, use this to actually put a couple holes in a sheath for my Boker Rhino, uh, just so I could attach it differently to a tech lock. But yeah, that is my most carried knife and probably will remain that way until I get a different sack. Stays in the fifth pocket of my jeans when I wake up and during the course of the day it stays there and it only comes out when I go to bed type thing. And last but definitely not least is my Spartan Blade Enyo. I love carrying this knife and love using it. It's such a small package but it's such a tough knife. And you might think that for well, I paid about $200 all in for this knife. You might think that I might not want to use it, but I got this for a beater knife. It may sound stupid, but for me, knives that I use are usually the more expensive ones because they could actually take it. I mean, you buy a $15 knife and beat on it, you're going to break it, right? Uh, but you buy a, a $200 knife like this is to me, and use it and if you do break it I guarantee you Spartan Enyo's uh, Spartan Enyo Spartan Blades will uh, take care of you with their customer service uh, been very surprised and very grateful to their customer service when I first got this knife uh, the original sheath I got was a little bit tweaked I think someone had screwed with it in the shop you can see how sort of bent out it is and not uniform sent it back to them. They ended up sending me the original sheath back and they remolded it so it fits perfectly now. And the retention on it's awesome. Plus they sent me a brand new sheath. And I uh, was really surprised. I did a video on that a while back. I was really surprised to get uh, my original sheath back and the actual new sheath that they sent me. And uh, really surprised me. This knife feels really great in the hand to me. It definitely has a, a lot of different grips you could use it for. And uh, this one right here seems to be a really great utility grip. Uh, just place your index finger on there and pinch grip it sort of. And you can sort of open up boxes and uh, score tiles. That's what I've used this for at work a lot of times. Putting in flooring, uh, that sort of just click together flooring if you score it and snap it. This is what I use for that. The finish on this is pretty remarkable. They call it a PVD coating, and it really withstands a lot of abuse. Um, cut open some cans at work just so I could mix a few paints and epoxies, and uh, it leaves material from the uh, can behind on it, but if you just take a, a little bit of oil, I use 3-in-1 oil, and uh, wipe it down, that comes right off, and the coating's none worse for wear. Love the jimping on this, love love everything about this knife, and it's a real joy to carry in, uh, in and on the belt. You can see here I have it mounted to a tech lock with my uh, flashlight also uh, hooked up to it. Um, this is probably the most used way I carry this knife, uh, on my belt, on my right hip, or on my left hip, so I could draw it with both hands type thing. If I'm not carrying it like that, I have it in this sheath here around my neck. Great blade. Um, probably not for everybody this knife, but if you're looking for a hard, hard use knife that could take a lot of abuse and in a very small and compact package, this would be the one for you. Um, looking at the tip here, you might think it's a very fine tip and you might have to be delicate with it. But uh, my flash just kicked off for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but definitely not a delicate tip. You can see how much actual material there is behind that. And uh, never had a problem sort of doing picking motions with this. Great blade. 
So that's it guys. That's my five most carried and used knives of 2015. I hope you like this and uh, stay tuned for more videos guys. Thanks.